I mentioned here some medications. It's very difficult to choose which medicine is going to be tolerated better by a person, whether it's a medicine that increases the signal of serotonin or serotonin and norepinephrine or both. It's impossible. If a person has a constraint for money, then a generic medication is better. Some people think about the tricyclic medications. Uh, last year, Dr. Young spoke, and he reviewed this topic. Sometimes the headache pain is better treated with a tricyclic like amitriptyline. Sometimes th th that's not tolerated well. Under cognitive, I introduce some things here. Off-label use of the medicines for Alzheimer's increase acetylcholine. Amantadine has been studied by Dr. Krauss and others looking at frontal lobe changes on MRI and fMRI. And of course, Ritalin. Mr. E, that I talked about earlier, his daughter came to see me about three weeks ago. She's a high school senior. She was the driver of the car and has post-traumatic stress. And, and she went from being a very good student to a poor student. She doesn't sleep, she has headaches, and she can't concentrate. She never had attention deficit disorder, but those were the symptoms she had with cognition. I put her on the dexmethylphenidate or Focalin. I put her on something for headache, and I put her on Trazodone, which is a medicine that helps with sleep. It works at a, up towards the surface rather than deeper in the water. And within a week, she's much, much better. But I'm not sure. So what I'm suggesting is it's, it's helpful to be knowledgeable as a patient or as a caregiver to have a working relationship with a knowledgeable physician because you simply don't know how the medicines are going to be tolerated. It's not the same thing as urinating in a cup and seeing that you have E. coli and then you're treating a urinary tract infection. It's, it's more complicated and it has to evolve over time. In addition to medication, there are therapies that I consider important. Some people avail themselves of them and some people don't. In the audience, my wife and my nurse are here and, and they're osteopathically trained, and, and they have a feel like a musician that can tune an instrument for the proprioceptive changes that occur to the body. And, and just like a, a chiropractor or a physical therapist, they have special training in the field of osteopathic manipulation. I mentioned something about neurofeedback. Well, this is, this is a picture of, uh, uh, from, from the Internet. It's a, just a picture of placing the hands under the head. Probably people have heard of that. It's called craniosacral osteopathy. And here's a, here's a photo of a child that's hooked up looking at a computer. And the computer is going to continue to, pro, to, to keep that program going depending on the feedback from the scalp leads. And, and over here, these were the recommendations from that QEEG that I had. It says, with the eyes open, inhibit delta. That meant that that color on the front part of the brain that was red and yellow on the circle picture of the QEEG, that, that meant that there was too much slowing. This person's going to watch the computer screen, probably watch a movie, but it could be listening to a song or playing a game. And that task on the computer screen will continue as long as the parameters from that person's scalp going into the computer say, okay, this person's slow waves are getting a little bit faster. The program would stop. You wouldn't hear the movie or the music sound would stop. And this becomes an unconscious feedback, just like riding a bicycle, just like biofeedback. Of course, therapies by a skilled psychologist that's, that's trained in working with executive dysfunction, that's, that's comfortable in, in rehabilitation, or a personal therapist uh, uh, to, to work with. I mentioned vision therapy, and there are articles here. It's not uncommon after a mild traumatic brain injury or a severe injury or moderate injury that the visual information getting to the back of the brain is distorted. The uh, signal to make those eyes track, track, track uh, symmetrically or, or parallel is disrupted. And, 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 the, and that's called a convergence insufficiency. And there's many articles published that using vision therapy, not for sight, we're not talking about sight where you see 2020 or 2060, but to get the visual information to the brain so the brain can organize it properly, that becomes another uh, feedback uh, technique that's called vision therapy. There's only about three or four hundred doctors that are optometrists that I know of that are, that are trained in this area. And I, and I mentioned an article here. 
The last part, I, I, I said I would include advocating for uh, yourself uh, for mild traumatic brain injury. This audience here, I, I hate to say it, but, but having heard this talk probably is better informed uh, than, than most physicians are, than most coaches are, and most of the general public. Uh, this information isn't synthesized and put together. Mostly what happens is people are associate a, a brain injury with a severe brain injury, and, and a mild injury just gets better. So you have to advocate for yourself. You have to go to a doctor. And the first thing that most doctors reach for is something to make you feel better uh, with some pain medicine. But if that's not working, and you rested, you're an athlete that just didn't get better, what do you do? Well, you certainly would contact the Brain Injury Association, but there's many people that don't know that. It's always better to act sooner rather than later. Most people, like ostriches, help uh, hope that things will, will go away if you put your head in the sand. And the good news is that most of uh, uh, post-concussion uh, symptoms go away. They get better over time. But uh, if, if, you, if you're in business or you're teaching and you can't go back to your level of function and pain medicine isn't getting you better, what do you do? Well, it's a good idea to work with someone that does not have a brain injury and really to consider that you do have a brain injury. It, it, it may resolve over a year. You might be left with a deficit. It might be permanent. But most bio, mild traumatic brain injuries get better over time. That's the end of my talk. If you have questions, I'd be glad to take them. Thank you very much.